Okay, thank you for the song. Um, my name is Cynthia Nyanshoka. I'll be doing the health nugget today. And our topic is gastric cancer. But before we start, I'd like us to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you so much for the gift of the Sabbath. And we thank you for the health nugget. Even as I'm about to deliver it, may you open our minds so that we might understand. And may you dwell amongst us as we go through it. All this I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, gastric cancer is also known as stomach cancer. And I think everyone knows the stomach is uh, a muscular organ. It's a muscular hollow organ that takes food from the esophagus. And it's, 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 it's in the passage from the mouth to the anus. So, um, it is located on the upper left area of the abdomen, just below our liver. And gastric cancer is an abnormal growth of cancerous cells in the abdominal lining. So uh, in, the, in, in this disease, we have risk factors that increase its occurrence in our bodies. So first of all, we have H. pylori infection. H. pylori infection destroys the lining of the stomach, and it leads to the abnormal growth of the cells because the bacteria affect uh, the, the normal, how the normal system works. So um, that is one of the risk factor. Another risk factor is age. People who are above the age of 60s, 70s are the ones who are more prone to gastric cancer than the younger people. Uh, we also have sex. Uh, the males are more prone to cancer than females. Uh, another thing is family history of gastric cancer or genetic syndromes that lead to, that lead to gastric cancer. Uh, uh, additionally, smoking and alcohol consumption also increase the risk of gastric cancer. Obesity is another factor. And lastly, we have the high intake of processed foods, which is the junk food that we take, burgers and every processed food. Um, also, high intake of salted food and smoked foods. And lastly, we have exposure to high radiation levels. So the epidemiology of cancer, this, is, this, this basically means the occurrence of cancer. And I'll narrow down to our country. Uh, as I said earlier, gastric cancer is more prevalent in men than in women. And in our country, it is the ninth commonest malignancy that occurs. Um, we also have the estimate of 7.0% in 100,000 people. So you can see how rampant it is. And in, now in, in our current generation where there is everything, you can take in everything, the risk, this epidemiology will increase as the years go by. So we should be careful. So we have the clinical presentations of gastric cancer. First, there is unexplained weight loss because now when you have increased, these cancer cells, they really take up nutrients. And that means that you should eat as often as possible. And one thing about cancer is it also suppresses our appetite. So you might find the nutrients that are being used up, but you're not, you're not taking them back in. So most of the people get unexplained weight loss. We have dyspepsia, which is the upper abdomen comfort above the navel where our stomach is situated. We also have indigestion, bloating, and fluid buildup. Additionally, you can experience heartburns uh, when you have gastric cancer. There is nausea and vomiting. And in this vomit, sometimes it contains blood. That's, that thing is called hematemesis, when your vomit contains the blood. Uh, we also have people experiencing black stools. And this black stool is mainly because it also contains blood. Because now when the food passes through the lining of the stomach and there is the abnormal growth and the, the lining is not fully normal, it passes with blood. So now when, you, when, when the stool comes out, it also contains the blood. There is also difficulty in swallowing. We also have lack of appetite. And people who have gastric cancer tend to eat small amounts of food and they get full faster. Uh, and lastly, we have fatigue. Uh, next is the diagnosis of gastric cancer. One thing, about this, uh, one thing about the symptoms of gastric cancer 
they are not specific, like they occur in very many diseases. So here I, it is highly encouraged that if you experience any of these symptoms, it's good to seek medical advice so that they can, they can do further checkup and then they can tell you if it's really gastric cancer. So uh, one, uh, I have two ways of detecting the adenocarcinoma, which is the gastric cancer. First, there is endoscopy and bios bi biopsy. In this, in this method, they just insert a flexible pipe through from your mouth to the stomach, and it can, the physician can check how, how the lining is so that it can show the abnormal growth of the cells. And this uh, biopsy, they take a few cells from the, if, if the physician realizes that you have an abnormal mass in the stomach, they take a few of the cells and they, use, they take them to the lab for further testing so that they can diagnose the gastric cancer. Another method is imaging, which is the CT scan. I know most of you know what CT scan is. You, you, you're taken to the radiation uh, lab in the hospital, and then they, they see your stomach. They, it prints something that the physician can use to determine whether you have an abnormal mass in the stomach. So we have management of gastric cancer. There is the endoscopic mucosal resection. We have surgery, and before this surgery to there are some preoperative measures that can be done, like chemotherapy, so that it can reduce the mass of, of the cells to be reduced, uh, to be removed. Uh, we also have postoperative therapy, which after the operation, you can still continue doing, uh, what are they called? You can continue doing the, you can continue doing the chemotherapy. And we also have clinical trials and follow-up tests that the doctors do so that they can see the progress of the tumor in the stomach. We have uh, endoluminal stent placement where the physician can put a stent. A stent is like a tube that can allow the food to pass through from your mouth to the small intestines smoothly because now your stomach has the tumor already. We have gastrogejectomy and targeted therapy, among other methods. And lastly, you know prevention is better than cure. And because once you get this disease, you go through a lot mentally, physically, the pain that cancer comes with, and so much. So preventing the disease, is you should always purpose for that to be the first step. So uh, ways of pre preventing the disease are such as avoiding taking alcohol and tobacco products, Second, you should increase your physical activity, that is exercise. Also, we should avoid processed and high, we should avoid processed, high salted and smoked foods. We should avoid exposure to radiations. Also, when you realize you have H. pylori infection, as I said earlier, H. pylori is one of the things that increase your risk of gastric cancer. So once you, you are diagnosed with H. pylori, you should really work on it so that it does not advance to cause the gastric cancer. And lastly, we should purpose to eat fruits, green vegetables and whole grains so that we maintain a healthy weight and, and avoid and minimize the, the risk of us getting gastric, gastric cancer. So with this, at, lastly, I'd like to encourage each of us that God is always there. Even if you are in this journey of battling with cancer, the great physician does not sleep and he will always come through for you. And people will have your back, and you can, you can always seek for help whenever you need. Thank you so much. I'd like us to pray so that I finish. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day. Once again, we thank you for the gift of life and the gift of the Sabbath. As I have delivered this health nugget to your people, I pray that you may help us implement everything that has been said here in our lives. Help us to to be healthy and may you keep us safe until you come all this i pray trust me and believing amen